Welcome back guys. If you're anything like me, you've probably had loads of YouTube recommendations about dividend stocks, which ones to buy, which ones have the best dividends, and so on. So let's talk about how much you really need invested to live entirely off the dividends. Missing out on this year's gains, and that is dividend investors. Time has come to start loading the boat on dividend stocks. And but you never see free cash flow yield mentioned in YouTube titles or low price to earnings ratios. So what is it in particular that makes dividend investing so popular with investors? Today, I wanna to go through why dividend investing is so popular, what the strengths and weaknesses of a dividend focused approach is, and also some metrics that I think are more useful than dividend yield when it comes to evaluating a stock. So without further ado, let's get right into it. As a personal side note, six out of the 11 companies that I own in my individual stock portfolio pay dividends, but it's not really a factor that I look out for when I'm picking the companies, and I'll explain why later. In fact, I actually have to pay a 15% withholding tax before I receive any dividends from US companies as a foreign investor, but even without that, it isn't really a factor that goes into my buying process. But some of the investors that I respect the most on YouTube, like Joseph Carlson, place a really heavy emphasis on dividends. And why is that? Everyone would love to have a monster dividend portfolio. One that spits out huge dividends day after day. Thousands and thousands of dollars. A portfolio of businesses that produces so much income every single week, every month, that you can live off of it. It completely subsidizes and replaces your active income. What Joseph Carson is describing there, I like to call the dividend dream. Now, it's the dream shared by most dividend investors that by generating enough passive income via their investments, that they will eventually be able to replace the active income from their jobs, meaning that they will be able to effectively retire and no longer have to do the soul crushing commute and nine to five that most people face every day. But that's a dream shared by most investors, including me. What they're also forgetting to say is there's an even easier way to get passive income from your investments by selling them. Now, when you sell a stock, you probably will incur some level of capital gains tax. That's a tax on any profit that you've made since originally buying the stock. And in America, there's two forms, both long-term and short-term capital gains tax, but dividends pay the exact same tax in America and there's functionally no difference at all. And in the UK, there's actually a small tax benefit from receiving your gains in the form of capital gains rather than dividends. And a lot of people also don't realize that when a stock pays a dividend, the stock price goes down by the exact same amount as the dividend paid out on the ex-div date. So there's literally no reason why being paid a dividend actually matters. Dividends are usually pitted against stock buybacks when it comes to methods by which companies can provide capital or value to their shareholders. Now, dividends are pretty obvious in the value they provide. It's just straight up hard cash for owning the stock. Whereas the method by which share buybacks provide value is a little bit more subtle. The company buys back its own shares on the open market meaning that all current shareholders own a greater portion of the business. And this usually is reflected in the share price over time, which should go up. Dividend investors much prefer dividends to stock buybacks because they believe it's a much more stable form of income. When you look at the COVID crash, for example, many companies almost cut their stock buyback programs entirely, even though it was actually the best time to be buying back stock as the share price had gone so low, whereas they didn't cut their dividends. And the reason for this is if a company cuts its dividend, it's usually seen as a massive sign of weakness in the company and investors will start panic selling it. Ultimately though, I do think that the flexibility of stock buybacks is just so much better for a company than having to pay a consistent dividend every year and even cutting it by five or 10% will cause all investors to start panicking because being able to efficiently allocate your cash flows like that 
enables you to make much bigger investments in your actual business itself. Nobody's going to start panicking if a business stops buying back its shares if the share price has gone back up. But if they cut their dividends to start investing in something else, there will be a lot of panic. Just look at Disney, for example, that cut its dividend entirely and there is massive panic around the stock. There is an argument to be said that many companies end up doing stock buybacks at the worst time when the stock price is high rather than just doing a dividend and that provides less value to investors, which I think there is something to, but ultimately if a dividend is paid to an investor, are they really going to reinvest the dividend more efficiently than the company that has all of the inside knowledge themselves? In my opinion, probably not. There's also incentives for companies to raise their dividends year after year to be included in indexes like the Dividend Aristocrat Index. This is an index which basically tallies all of the American companies which have raised their dividend for the last 25 years. But when we actually look at the list and some of the financials of the companies, let's say Walgreens Boots Alliance, which has a 8.6% dividend yield, we can see that the business has actually been struggling quite badly over the last few years and it's still been raising its dividend despite making a loss. That really doesn't bode well for the company's chances in the future as any cut in the dividend will make the share price go down but any increase in the dividend will also push the company towards bankruptcy. One metric I like to look at is the dividend payout ratio. That's basically the percentage of a company's earnings that it's paying out as a dividend. I like to see this as low as possible in the teens and not above 25% for sure. Anything above that means that the company's entire focus is almost on just paying the dividend and not really reinvesting enough money back into the business itself. This might be because the business is really mature, but ultimately I do think that it suggests that the company is out of ideas and it's not really one that's pushing to grow in the future. A lot of UK companies fall into this category where they effectively are just paying dividends, but they have no emphasis on growth. And this is what's led to the UK indexes being full of companies described as being the Jurassic Park of the stock market. Stock buybacks get a lot of heat politically, but in my opinion, they're pretty much the exact same thing as dividends, just a way for a company to return capital to the investor. And that is something I look for in companies, one of the qualities that I look for, the return of capital to the investor. But I personally don't care whether that comes in the form of dividends or stock buybacks as long as it happens. Dividend yield is a really popular metric for evaluating a stock and that's because it's so easy to understand. If you put $1,000 into a 5% dividend yielding company, it's going to pay you $50 per year. The same as if you were to put $1,000 into a cash interest account and that would also pay you $50 per year. But it's not the best measure of a company's cash flow production. That would be free cash flow yield. This is a measure that I much prefer to use and it's effectively a measure of the interest that a company is able to pay to you, although you might not receive it all up front. I like to own companies that have as high a free cash flow yield as possible, but it's not the only thing that you should be paying attention to because there are plenty of companies that have really high free cash flow yields but have declining free cash flows over the years. So be careful to avoid these and pay attention to free cash flow per share growth. And that's something that I make sure that all of my companies have as well. Let's take Alta. It has above a 5% free cash flow yield and it also has a historic high growth rate in its free cash flow per share. Ultimately, all free cash flow and profits are derived from a company's revenue. And that's something that I want to be growing at a steady pace as well as have projections for a similar growth rate in the future. So all companies that I buy should have a decent level of revenue growth. But I don't focus on revenue growth entirely as there are many companies that have really high revenue growth rates, but no record of actually being able to turn those revenues into profits. 
And you see that a lot with hype stocks nowadays. I prefer to own a company which has high revenue growth, but also has a high profit margin and a high return on invested capital. So while dividends get all the views, I personally won't be focusing on them too much in my YouTube videos as I really don't think that they're that relevant to building a good portfolio. And they certainly don't play any part in my decision as to whether I want to own a stock. But if you did have any thoughts or disagreed with me at all, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. If you did like the video, please leave me a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.